Well, I happen to have a very ridiculous uh, theory, according to Brady, many uh, ball club operators, that it should be fun. Let's face it, often the ball game is not the most exciting thing that ever has happened. When you look back at sports history in St. Louis, there's no shortage of unique and weird moments. Many thanks to that man you just saw, Bill Veck. But one always stands out from the rest, the tale of three foot seven inch Eddie Goodell and one of the wildest, wildest at bats in the history of baseball. It happened 70 years ago this week. And our Corey Miller takes us back to that historic day at Sportsman's Park in tonight's Sports Plus Spotlight Story. The old saying goes, you never know quite what you're going to see on any given day at the ballpark. St. Louis Browns owner Bill Vex certainly lived that mantra. The American League Browns may not have had the winning pedigree of their Sportsman's Park roommates, the Cardinals, but that doesn't mean they weren't interesting. The Eddie Goodell incident is just one of many across the uh, resume of Bill Vec. You know, he was interested in bringing fans to the ballpark. And you just never knew what you were going to see. And fans at the ballpark on this exact site on August 19th, 1951, were treated to some history when three foot seven Chicago based actor Eddie Goodell hit the scene and surprised everyone, becoming the shortest player in the history of Major League Baseball. Goodell popped out of an oversized birthday cake between games of a Sunday doubleheader. They didn't know what was going to happen. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Not even French Sauche, who he pinch hits for, knew this was going to happen. And if anyone knows the Eddie Goodell game, it's Frank Sauce. The Washington, Missouri native is the last player alive from that game and was the man Goodell replaced as a pinch hitter. I started to lead off and uh, the umpire called time and said there's going to be a pinch hitter and out of the dugout, Eddie Goddell came trotting with a little bat about that long over his shoulder. Goodell stood in against the Tigers and after a brief protest saw four straight pitches miss his minuscule strike zone. And he turned into quite the showman on his way down the line after his walk. After ball four was called, Eddie started to trot down to first base. And halfway down to first base, Eddie stopped and took his hat off and bowed to the crowd on the first base side, bowed to the crowd over on the third base side. I said, you kind of hammed it up going down to first base. He said, man, I felt like Babe Root. They said, Eddie, why not one swing, one swing? Well, first of all, his bat was tiny. He could probably not hit the ball. But he said, Mr. Vec told me if I take a swing, there's a sniper up on the roof that'll shoot me dead. Goodell was immediately replaced for a pinch runner, ran off the field, and into baseball history. And so did his iconic one ace jersey that he borrowed from the Browns' bat boy. But it wasn't any bat boy. And the bat boy was the general manager's son, Billy DeWitt Jr. Yep. That Bill DeWitt Jr., the current owner of the Cardinals. The rest of Goodell's story was not a happy one. A combative personality sometimes brought out by comments about his size led to a rough life. He died at the age of 36 after getting into a fight. But 70 years later, we're still talking about him and one of the most legendary stunts in the history of sports. I said, man, this is the greatest act of show business I've ever seen. I will never forget this. The crazy tidbits from this story are almost endless, but my favorite is this. That 1-H jersey that's now on display at the Cardinals Hall of Fame, well, for a few years in the 50s, it was a go-to Halloween costume for Bill DeWitt Jr. and his sister. That's right, one of the most unique pieces of baseball memorabilia in history used to go door-to-door -door in St. Louis getting Halloween candy. For Sports Plus, I'm Corey Miller.